What's up, family? Man, we're going to have a heart to heart today as we talk about the disrespect. You know, disrespect. Man, <laughs> there's a passage in the um, Bible that talks about David being disrespected. Stay with me. We're going somewhere. The disrespect is real. It's real. But we have to understand why they disrespect you. Okay? So there's a passage in the Bible where David, you know, he's a little sheep herder. He's taking care of the sheep. And his father sends him to go take some stuff to his brothers, to his older brothers who are in the military. And so David's taking food and different things to his brothers. And his brother's like, why are you his oldest brother? like, why are you here? You know, you're just nosy and you just want to see the battle. You just want to see war and we'll do, do You know, his oldest brother's going off on David, you know. And David, all David did was just bring him some food, bring them some stuff from their father. His father told him to go. Stay with me, go somewhere. His father sent him there. He would have never been there had it not been for his father directing him to go. He was sent on assignment to take some stuff to his brothers, to make life easier for his brothers. And his oldest brother is disrespecting him. His oldest brother don't want him there. Don't want him around. We're going to get into why in a minute. So while David's there, David hears this giant disrespecting the children of Israel, disrespecting them and just clowning them, just going off on them. David's like, oh, hell no. Nah. You know what I mean? No, you're not going to talk about my God like that. And you get a pass? There, There is no freebies when you're talking about my God. David's on one. David's pissed. David's ready to go to war. They brighten David before the king, King Saul, who was picked by God, who was chosen by God. So David's brought before the king. And the king's like, who are you to fight? You can't fight nobody. You're too small. And you do, do. He's going on why David can't fight. Why David can't go out and fight this giant. And it's really not about David. Stay with me. So here. You have David's brother. His oldest brother. Disrespecting him. You have the king. Disrespecting him. Finally, the king gives in and he's tired of hearing David talk and ramble on and on and on. And the king is like, okay, whatever, go ahead. But initially, the king wasn't trying to hear it. David goes out to fight the giant. The giant comes out and sees his little boy. The giant's talking about how little he is, how handsome, how cute he is. Ain't he got something better he needs to be doing? Who the heck does he think he is? He's not groomed for war. The giant is disrespecting David. So you have David's brother who's disrespected David. You have the king who's disrespected David. And the truth is, the king knew he was chosen by God. Saul knew that God put his hand of approval on him. God knew, I'm um, excuse me, Saul knew that God said, you're my king. You're the one. Saul and his guys, his, his army, saw what God has done for them in battles in the past. They saw how God moved on their behalf and blessed them and used them. But now they got this giant standing there. And they're terrified. 
the king is scared and he won't go out to the field. His army is scared. They ain't trying to go out to battle either. And so the disrespect for David comes because David is smaller in stature than most of the guys in the army. Definitely his brothers. David hasn't fought like they have in war. He hasn't been trained in military tactics. He hasn't been shown how to use a sword and shield. And so, they're looking at what David is not. And they can't see what David is. Did you catch that? You got to catch that. They're so focused on what David is not that they can't see what David is. And that the truth be told, they didn't want David there because they were scared. They disrespected David because they didn't want David to see their fear. So it's this thing of projecting. It's this thing of, man, we're going to switch the conversation. Don't ask us about how come we haven't killed this dude yet. Don't ask us how come we haven't put our foot in his ass for disrespecting us and our God. And we'll do too. Oh, man, let's talk about why you here. Forget about this thing going on over here that's got us shaking in our boots. That's not the topic. That's not the subject. The subject is, why is your little scrawny ass up here in the first place? What are you up here for? There's no way you can handle that. Because they were scared. Because they were intimidated. You're talking about disrespect. Because they didn't have the ability to face this giant. They didn't think David did. They knew David didn't have the ability to. Because in their mind, they're more qualified than David. In their mind, they're better soldiers than David. In their mind, they're better warriors than David. In their mind, they're better men than David. And if these men, trained men, are scared of this giant, why shouldn't this little boy be trembling in his sandals? I'm talking about disrespect. See, here's the trick. They disrespected themselves. They disrespected the God that they believed in. They disrespected their people. Now, when it's put on blast, now we got this little boy up here. And we know this little boy is going back home. But we don't want this little boy going back home telling the people that we were scared. We don't want this little boy going back home telling the people what he saw and what he heard. He saw this giant disrespecting us. He saw this giant laughing at us, teasing us. And we didn't do anything about it. Why am I talking about this? Because as chosen ones, we're disrespected a lot. And what God had to show me was, Elijah, it's not personal. It feels like it's personal. But as the truth be told, Elijah, they see something in you that they don't see in themselves. 
Stay with me. Elijah, they don't understand how you've gone through all that you've got through. They don't understand how you made it out of all of the hell you've made it out of. And how are you still here today doing what you're doing? After all of the hell you've gone through, because they know had they gone through any bit of that, it would have been a wrap. Had they gone through one-tenth of what you went through, it would have been over for them. They would have never made it out. And so they see you and they're disrespecting you, not because you're not worthy of praise, not because you're not worthy of being lifted up. They're disrespecting you because they don't want you to know how powerful you are. They don't want you to come into your own. They don't want you to outshine them and you've already outshined them. And so they're mad at you for outshining them because they know they can handle what you've gone through. They know they can't face what you face. They know there's something about you that makes you different. They don't know what it is. And they refuse to say it's the hand of God. They refuse to accept the fact that you're chosen. So they'd much rather look at you and say, you're different. You're crazy. You're strange fruit. They got all these things to say about you. Because what they can't say, what they won't say, is that God has chosen you. God has blessed you. God has ordained and called you. God has his hand on your life. And so they'll disrespect you. Because they're mad. They're salty that it's not them. They're salty and mad because they can't do what you do. And they saw David come out there. And they knew that David wasn't afraid of the giants. And that pissed them off. That was an insult to them. To their manhood. That was an insult to their character. I thought these were trained soldiers. King Saul was, he was the king. And how the hell is this king going to send this little boy out to fight a grown man's battle? That's how much of a coward Saul had become. He was too afraid. To do something. And the, the trip is. It was set up that way. So that they could see the hand of God move. See the brothers in the army had to be terrified. The king had to be terrified. Jesse, David's daddy, had to send him out there on that particular day. See, all these things had to be as they were. Divine timing. Divine purpose. Talking about being the, um, disrespected. <laughs> Brain fart. Talking about being disrespected. David had no idea when he got the message or got the stuff from his dad. They're just going out there to take that stuff. He would be disrespected by his brothers. I 
I'm sure in David's mind, he thought his brothers would be happy to see them, see him. I'm sure in David's mind, man, he was happy to see his brothers. He was happy to be able to take them some stuff from dad. And he thought they would be happy to see him. He thought they would welcome him in. That's not what happened. That's not what happened because of what was going on behind the scene. What was going on behind the scene was this giant was disrespecting them. And they didn't want David to see that. Oh God was showing to me about that. People disrespect you. People don't like you. It ain't got nothing to do with you. And so often we're looking at, man, how come they don't accept me? How come they don't embrace me? And I thought they would be happy to see me. I thought they would be happy to be in my presence. And we'll do it open. Man, I'm qualified to do this. Da, 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 da. I thought they did. They, they. There's some stuff going on behind the scenes that you're not aware of. There's some psychological, emotional damage and trauma taking place that you're not aware of. There's some disrespect taking place that you're not aware of. There's some low self-esteem and self-hatred taking place that you're not aware of. And so, they disrespect themselves. And they're going to disrespect you too. They're not going to love you. They're not going to embrace you. Because they're not capable of loving you and embracing you. So after David goes out and kills the giant. After David faces all of their fears. It's not his fear. It's their fears. After David goes out and manhandles slaughters what they were fearful of. You would think that they would be proud of him. You would think that they would rejoice for this little boy doing what they couldn't do. They were glad that David killed what they couldn't kill. But Saul, the king, saw the hand of God, knew that this boy was anointed, was appointed by God, was chosen by God, and he became jealous. And his jealousy fueled his rage. This little boy did what y'all couldn't do. He eliminated the threat for y'all. And you're now jealous of him. You're now full of rage and hate towards him. The disrespect is real. They're not going to respect you. They're not going to value you. It is foolish for you to think that they're going to. It's foolish for us to want them to. They're never going to respect you. This is something that God had to show me a while back. It don't matter whether they respect you. 
people don't have to respect you. And I have this thing. I'm going to make you respect me. And God had to show me, you can't make somebody respect you. You can't even stop somebody from disrespecting you, Elijah. If you can't stop them from disrespecting you, how can you force them to respect you? I'm saying it again. If you can't stop somebody from disrespecting you, how can you force them to respect you? And I was like, oh, hold on, wait a minute, man. Well, you hold on, guy. You can stop somebody from disrespecting you. You know what I mean? You can, you can slap the shit out of somebody. You can kick somebody's ass. Don't do it. And God was like, Elijah, you can do all that you want to. They can still disrespect you. They may not um, disrespect you in your face. They may not disrespect you where you hear them disrespecting you. They could be disrespecting you in their minds. They could be disrespecting you when you ain't around. You don't know what people are thinking. It's foolish for you to think that you can stop somebody from disrespecting you. You can stop the blatant disrespect, but you can't stop the subtle disrespect. You can't stop the disrespect that they're doing in their head of all the things they're thinking about what they want to do to you. That's disrespect, Elijah. They're just not communicating it to you. But to everybody else, they're disrespecting you. In their head, they're disrespecting you. In their heart, they're disrespecting you. The question is, why do you feel the need to need their respect? It is what it is. Their disrespect for David didn't stop David from doing what he needed to do. Their disrespect for David didn't stop David from facing the giant. Their thoughts their opinions about you are irrelevant. They're irrelevant. See, because in the, after David killed the, the giant, Saul and everybody else was praising David, quote unquote, praising David. But in here, in Saul's heart, in Saul's mind, he wasn't praising David. He was jealous of David. And he began to hate David. Although he never said it verbally in the beginning. Oh, they were coming back and the people were singing, Saul killed his thousands. But David his ten thousands. No, what they were saying was David killed ten times as many people as you did, and you're the king. This little nobody, this little reject, this little boy who hadn't even been trained in military tactics, this little sheep herder has slaughtered ten times as many people as you have, king. And Saul became enraged and tried to kill David. The disrespect is real.
And it is what it is. And it's going to be what it's going to be. Don't trip off of what they're doing. Don't trip off of what they think. That ain't really got anything to do with you. If you want to psychoanalyze it, it'll show you something about them. It'll tell you something about them. And some of the trauma and some of the pain and suffering that they're carrying. That's what their disrespect to show you. That's what their opinions and beliefs will tell you and show you. They're a window into their own personal life. We have to grow up. Stop trying to fit in to what all these other people think. Stop trying to be accepted and embraced and liked by all these people. Because with their mouth, they say, may say one thing. You can't see their agenda. You can't see their motive. Sometimes they allow you to see their disrespect because it's blatant and it's in your face. But the great majority of the times you'll never see their disrespect. And just because you don't see it doesn't mean that it's not there. We have to learn how to stop being moved by other people's opinion, good or bad. We gotta stop allowing that to affect us. I love you guys. Thank you for rocking out with me. I'll probably be doing a live Sunday, the, what is that? I don't even know what day that is, but this coming Sunday, we'll probably be doing a live. I'm not sure a time yet. I'll post that sometime Saturday. I love you guys. Happy healing. Peace.